So, I hear you want to run Windows in your M1 MacBook Air. Well, there is good news and there is bad news. The good news is that Parallels for Mac just released a technical preview build for your M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro that you can install and then create virtual machines. Now, the bad news is that you are limited to installing the ARM version of the Windows or Linux operating systems. What is the ARM version, you might ask? The ARM version, to keep it really simple, is the processor architecture that the M1 chip uses. So if you want to virtualize and run another operating system on top of your M1 MacBook Air, that's where the ARM edition of Windows and other Linux distributions come into play. So you have to download those specific ARM editions. We don't yet have the ability to run Intel-based operating systems. Usually they are the x86 or x64 versions of the Windows and the Linux. So we don't yet have that capability available. Maybe we will get it soon. I don't know. We have to wait and see. So what do we need? Well, we need basically two things. The Parallels for Mac technical preview build and the operating system that you want to download, whether that is Windows or Linux. Let's go ahead and look at what the experience is in installing Windows and Linux in your M1 MacBook Air using the Parallels for Mac technical preview. The first thing you need to download is the Parallels desktop for Mac with the Apple M1 chip support. This is right now a technical preview. It's not even beta. So you have to sign up and then download the technical preview and install it in your Mac. The next thing you need to download is either the Windows or the Linux distribution. For the Windows, you would need to sign up into Windows Insider website as a Windows Insider, and then you get the option to download Windows 10 on ARM Insider preview build. Now this preview build, unlike other preview builds, is not available as an ISO image. It, it is available as a VHDX file, which is basically a virtual disk file. Once you install Parallels, you can just double click and open this file and that will create the VM automatically using the Parallels app. Now, one thing to note here, since you're installing the ARM Insider Preview, you won't be able to run the 32-bit or 64-bit apps that you usually run in your Windows. So Microsoft just released a new Insider build that you would need to update the build that you're downloading here, and that will give you the support for x64 emulation. And this emulation is very similar to Apple's Rosetta engine. So just like how the Rosetta engine translates the Intel apps to its ARM architecture, that is to the M1 chip architecture, the emulation engine in Windows translates all of the 32-bit and 64-bit Intel-based apps to the ARM version of the Windows. So we will also look at how we go and update the virtual machines uh, to this Insider Preview build. Now, this is what is involved with creating a Windows virtual machine. For the Linux, you have few options. You can choose to download Ubuntu Linux that is available for the ARM architecture. You can also download the Debian distribution. You can also download OpenSUSE. You can also download Fedora Linux. So if you are into Linux, you have few options there. Don't worry about the links. I will put them in the description below so you can go ahead and download these directly from your browser. So I have gone ahead and installed the Parallels tool here. I have also created two virtual machines, one Ubuntu and one Windows. But that aside, let me show you the experience of creating that Windows virtual machine using the VHDX file. Now the VHDX file, once you have downloaded, you can see that it is ready to be opened in Parallels. If you do right click, you can see that the default is set to Parallels desktop app. So all I have to do now is double click and then that will start creating the virtual machine with that virtual disk that you downloaded.
So at this point, you can see that our Windows 10 VM was created successfully, but there is something going on here where I just get a blank screen. So this is right now a bug. The way to fix this is to go and turn off the time sync in your VM settings. To do that, first you would need to shut down the VM because there is just a black screen, there's nothing you can do here. So just make sure that you have the window selected for the virtual machine, go to actions and then shut down. So now what we need to do is go to the Windows 10 VM that you created, click on the gear icon that should open up the settings, go to options, go to more options. And here you have an option for the time. The default is sync from Mac. This is what is creating that problem. So all we need to do is set it to do not sync and that should fix the issue. And now when we go back and turn on the VM, we should be able to see the windows booting into the desktop. And now we should be able to use the virtual machine in a few seconds. So it's logging me in already and I am logged in and here's the desktop. So as usual, you can, you know, resize the screen and parallel desktops will make it really easy for you to work with the virtual machine you install. In this case, the Windows virtual machine here. Now, this comes with some of the default apps as you would expect, like the Microsoft Store and other apps that it's trying to still install in this particular build. But the bad news is that none of those apps work. So if I try to open the Microsoft Store app, you can see that nothing is happening. And if you look at the Office apps that you have here and click on one of those, you can see that it's actually opening up the browser and not the desktop app. So you can install the Office desktop app. You just need to download it from your account to install it. However, there is good news for the Edge browser though. This is the old Edge browser, if you remember. So once you run it, it will ask you to download and install the new Edge browser. So all you have to do is download it and install it. And that will now install the new Edge browser rather than using the old one, which is pretty cool. The other thing you can do as well, if you are using Google Chrome, you can download Google Chrome as well. This supports ARM version of Windows, so you don't have to do any emulation. You can just download and install it. In fact, I think I have here in my downloads that I can um, install it. But meanwhile, our Edge got installed and we have the new Edge available for us. So here's my Chrome setup. I'm going to go and run this and that should install uh, the Chrome setup as well in my virtual machine. So that's how you install Chrome. It's exactly the same way as you would install Chrome in your PC or laptop. So Chrome should also function really well in your virtual machine. The next thing is to install the beta build so you can run 32-bit and 64-bit apps. To do that, you need to install the Windows Insider build. So you need to go to the settings you need to go to update and security and you need to go to the Windows Insider program and here you need to link that Windows Insider account you used to download the Windows Insider build that you created the virtual machine with. But before that, as it says here, go to the diagnostics and feedback option and turn on the sending the optional diagnostic data. Again, this is a test build. So this is not a retail build. So this is meant for developers to download the ARM edition and try out, you know, building new apps or creating support for the existing apps. And that's why these settings are supposed to be turned on. So once you turn on this, you can go back and now you can link your Windows Insider account. So make sure that you link the right account here. This account should be the same account you used to download the Windows 10 Insider build. So once you have linked your Windows Insider account, you can see that Windows automatically set the Insider settings to beta channel. So that's how you know that now your machine is going to install updates from the beta channel. Now you go to Windows Update, click check for updates. You should be getting few updates 
And once you install them, you should be able to go and use 32-bit and 64-bit Intel apps. Now, what I'm gonna do is I do have another VM installed where I have done all of these settings and also installed Office apps. So let me go and turn on the Windows um, VM that I have here. Now, one thing to notice here is that this machine, the M1 MacBook Air laptop is fanless. And the M1 is also very thermal efficient, meaning that I don't see any warmth or hot air coming from this laptop and no noise. This is so nice to have you know, if I do this in my Intel-based MacBook Pro, which I use parallels in my Intel-based uh, MacBook Pro, the fan just spins off and the machine gets really hot. But this is a really good experience and I can use it in my lap. I even have two VMs right now running. So here is my virtual machine with everything uh, set up. I do have the emulation engine here and I have also installed few apps. So for example, I have the PowerPoint app installed here and so far I have had no issues working with it. Um, I am able to open the files and do everything that I usually do. And you can even see that I have my OneDrive set up here where this particular presentation is being downloaded from my OneDrive account. So OneDrive also works in your Windows 10 ARM um, edition. The other thing I also have here is few 32-bit uh, apps, uh, which are pretty old, but something that I use uh, for work. There is the SharePoint designer, and there is the InfoPath forms designer that I usually use with my uh, SharePoint sites that are related to my work. So they also work really well. I haven't found any issues yet, but this is exactly why I use virtual machines to have some old apps that I can install and test them. So, so far this virtual machine has been really helpful for me and for my work. So that's how you can use Windows in your Mac with the Parallels desktop app. Again, note that there are many apps that don't work. Like for example, the Microsoft Store or the Photos app or even the Mail app. So they don't really work at this point in time, but I'm pretty sure that Microsoft will be fixing these issues and they have nothing to do with the Parallels desktop app. It's just that the right now, the apps in this test build are failing to open. I also have Linux virtual machine created here, which is the Ubuntu Linux. I'm gonna turn it on as well. So now I have three VMs running in my MacBook Air with the M1 chip. And I'm just going to open the activity monitor to see how much memory this is consuming. So you can see that I have physical memory 16 GB and so far the memory used is around 13 GB. And swap is still less, it's only 1.49 GB. And you can see here that both the Windows is using around 8 GB each and then the Ubuntu Linux is using around 3 GB. So you're gonna get good, if efficient optimization with the Linux VMs, of course, but with Windows, you're always going to need that extra RAM. So this is where I think your 16 GB RAM is going to uh, pay you well for uh, managing multiple VMs if you do have that scenario. And if I go into Ubuntu Linux, here you can see that I have similar apps. I have Firefox browser and then I have few other apps. But one thing to note with the Ubuntu Linux or any Linux distribution you're going to be using, that is the ARM version of those Linux editions, there are only few apps that support the ARM version of Linux. So there is no emulation engine like the one that we saw with Windows and the one we have in our M1 MacBook Air. So you're going to be limited to only the apps that you can use when it comes to Linux. So in that regards, I think your Windows virtual machine is much better so that with the test build and the emulation engine preview, you're able to run all of those old 32-bit or 64-bit apps you have in your Windows PC or the laptop. So that's it. 
That's how you use the Parallels desktop app for Mac for the M1 chip and install the Windows Insider Preview Build for the ARM edition and also the Linux distributions for the ARM version as well. If you enjoyed my video, please do press the like button. And if you want to see more videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye.